our final um, part will just be on the custom on the custom login. Now you can see here we've got uh, right click minimum maximum you've got units you can click on them you can order by a lot of people don't realize this but the ones in Reddit are custom Equitech parameters these are all the important parameters that you need to be logging we log certain ones by default you can log lots more we'll order them alphabetically and then by Equitech origin AFR both banks AFR target is what the ECU is going for the um, boost control, boost error, boost target. Calculated airflow is the factory boost control. We've got all the uh, custom maps. We can log the input and the output. Turbine wheel is the factory boost control, so we can see where we are on the maps. Digital parameters, we can see when we're in economy mode, safety mode and when speed density is on or off. Engine load percentage. We've also converted engine load. Um, and this was all the work that we did um, with the speed density, the VE based speed density. And we've converted engine load uh, absolute math in grams per revolution and engine load absolute speed density. So using the speed density because it works so well it's very easy to switch on speed density but still log the output of the maths then if you put on a three inch tube maybe 76 millimeter intake you can see the drop in math and by logging this parameter it's very easy to rescale the maths to suit using the 1d math sensor value Log gear. Ignition timing calculator is a very good parameter. As, you've, as we discussed earlier, we've rewritten the ignition control for the GTR. But if you were to log the ignition timing calculated parameter, you can actually see what the ignition timing would have been if the factory would have calculated the ignition timing. So this is very good if you feel your timing might not be right and you would like to see what the factory ECU would have run. If you log the ignition time, you can see what the factory calculation would have been should it be allowed to work. So the ignition time would be Equitex race on ignition timing, what you've got in your mode 1 to 4 maps. Ignition time calculated is what the factory ECU would have decided the ignition timing was in that instance. Um, initial wastegate angle, injection angle when the injector's firing, injector duty straightforward knock correction per cylinder knock correction and the threshold so you can see after you're breaking the threshold map switch mode quite important you can see if you choose this which map switch mode you're in um, mass airflow grams per second quite important because the 2d math sensors are a percentage of 0 to 100 we can log the mass airflow in grams per second um, the measured from the math sensor and the speed density conversion so you can see the difference this is important when you're doing hybrid. If you're swapping between math and speed density and speed density and math, then maybe if you're swapping at 3,000 revs, that you want to be logging this so you switch at 2.5 and, and you make sure at 3,000 that it's really accurate. Um, that you make sure that your speed density and your math are very close to each other at uh, the transition point. So swap over at 2,500 revs, at 3000, make sure your speed density mass airflow and your math based mass airflow are very similar. Um, and then reset the transition point up to more around 3000 revs. Race one version will pull the data back from the ECU, tell us which race one version we've got in the ECU. Um, maximum desired boost, so your race one boost controller, we can see if something else is acting on um, the target boost. SDVE efficiency, volumetric efficiency, will show you the output of the SD map. So literally it will write whatever the current RPM boost pressure, what is the output of the SD map, you can log that. Secondary air math voltage, um, very good for when you're using uh, flex fuel or whatever, or whatever you put into the secondary air map. I mean you could put a potentiometer in there, you can dial in 0 to 5 volts, you know, you can give the customer something on the dash. So you can have it set up so at zero volts, um, I don't know, maybe ignition timing at zero volts you've got 
zero degrees added and at five volts you have five degrees added and you've got a potentiometer a dial in the car you can turn up and down it's all for data logging so you can see how it's working make sure the input's working as you expect except for the fair flows through the factory boost control throttle date so delta is rate of change of throttle angle time and adjustment time desired to do is factory boost control maps and we're actually going to pull those from the software because we don't need them anymore with the latest high power race on maps uh, torque actual and torque demand torque demand is what you're asking for with the pedal torque actual is what the car's running this is the map that um, is very important and with the latest phase three is completely unaffected when we're doing map rescaling now so we don't have any drivability issues all the load rescaling issues um, where people mess about the engine load and just generally upset the running of the car the new the torque actual with the new high resolution torque actual map is amazing and gives incredible smoothness now uh, turbo dynamics integral and proportional from the factory boost control and the sum of them added together uh, wastegate duty wastegate angle and the correction again factory boost control and important for the traction control and things um, wheel speed sensor so um, if you're doing traction control setup, turn a lot of the logging off really and just go for the wheel speed sensors, vehicle speed, axle pedal, boost pressure, that sort of thing and get very accurately set up the um, wheel slip. 